Good evening guys and welcome back to my channel. So first of all, I want to say hello. I missed you guys. It's been a really long time since I've, well not really, it's been a few days since I've uploaded and I've just been itching to get back and make content for you. And we're going to start off this week with a perfume declutter. However, I no longer actually have these physical bottles so I cannot show them to you. I only have a couple of them left. Um, so these are perfumes that I've let go of over the last few months and I haven't shared them with you as I've gone. I've gotten really good lately at when I decide a perfume is not going to work. I'm very quick about decluttering it, finding it at home. I haven't been really holding on to them to do like a collective declutter. I think I'm going to go back to doing that though because I know you guys really enjoy seeing like a big collective declutter video. So before we get into today's declutter, I want to let you guys know that there's probably going to be some perfumes in here that will shock you as per usual, but I have to say a few things to preface the video. So number one, just because I let go of something doesn't mean I don't still love it. I have let go of a couple of perfumes that I love, love, love the way they smell. I really loved them. I just, for some reason, did not reach for them. These perfumes are all great, and you have to remember I have 50 plus perfumes, so I have to be very choosy about which ones I decide to keep into my collection and which ones I let go of and I have to actually wear the perfume or reach for it. It's not enough for me to love it. It's not enough for it to be just a beautiful perfume. I have to also actually wear it. So yeah, without further ado, let's get into today's video and let's just jump right in. Okay, so we're not going to go in any particular order and let's just start out with Chloe Nomad. So as I told you guys, I don't have the actual bottles in front of me, so I can only show you photos as well as a few quick points as to why I'm letting them go. So Chloe Nomad is a beautiful, fruity, oak mossy scent. Like I've told you guys, it has a little bit of that barbershop vibe. I think it's very classy. It's very sort of boho chic and I just, I really, really love the scent, but as I've told you guys before, I don't have that many fresh scents for the summertime because I live in Canada. There's really only a few months out of the year that I can actually wear these clean, fresh scents. And I have other sort of clean, fresh, floral, oak mossy scents that I do prefer over Chloe Nomad. And I quite simply decided that somebody else would have better use out of it. A couple of examples of perfumes I would reach for over Nomad are Flora Botanica and Chanel Chanso Fraiche. Actually, any of my Chanel perfumes I love so much, including Coco Mademoiselle, Gabriel Essence, which has become a new favorite of mine, and I've been really enjoying that one. Um, so Chloe Nomad, absolutely gorgeous. Haven't changed my thoughts on it. I just decided that it didn't quite make the cut to stay in my collection if I'm trying to keep my collection at a feasible number. The next two I let go of are going to be kind of odd sounding but I was sort of debating between keeping Rose's Vani from Mansara versus Rose's Musk from Montal. Both of them are beautiful musky rose scents. The Rose's Vani was a little bit more sugary and a little bit more heavy and kind of nighttime whereas the Rose's Musk was more wear anywhere anytime. Both of them absolutely stunning, absolutely beautiful. But again, those were two fragrances that I just didn't really see myself wearing. Like the Rose's Musk was a blind purchase and with blind purchases, it can go one of two ways. Well, it can go many ways, <laughs> but sometimes you love it and you'll think you'll wear it. Sometimes it's beautiful and it's a very strong like, but you probably won't wear it. So between the two, the Rose's Vanille was the one that ended up being the winner. For me, I just found it to be a little bit more vanillic and I really liked it, but at the end of the day, that was one I simply hardly ever worn. So the Rose's Vanille and the Rose's Musk did both eventually leave my collection. The next one is Eau de Mervai from Hermes. Now this one was one that I liked very early on in my perfume journey when I first started collecting perfumes and I had never smelled any other Hermes perfumes and this one for me was a like. It was not a strong love. It was one that I really thought was a beautiful perfume and I still do. I still recommend it to anybody who's looking for a beautiful kind of a woody, resiny summertime fragrance with some orange nuances that has a really good lasting power. This is a great perfume. I haven't smelled any of the other Eau de Mervais, like the L'Homme de Mervais or the um, Elixir, I haven't smelled any of those ones and I'm not prepared to blind purchase them because this particular scent profile, like I say, was a like for me but not a strong, strong love and I did not enjoy wearing this perfume. So I held on to this one for quite a long time. Finally, I decided I just needed to let it go because it was sitting there for all the wrong reasons and just not getting worn. 
The next one is Le Petit Robe Noir Intense. Now this one, you guys, I raved about this one forever. Again, this was a blind purchase early on in my perfume collecting journey, and I still think it's a beautiful, classy, sparkling, nighttime, more formal occasion perfume for women. Um, it smells similar to the original Le Petit Robe Noir, but it's more of a blueberry cotton candy, but as I have told you, it's more of an elevated blueberry cotton candy. Again, absolutely gorgeous, but it just was not a perfume that I ever reached for or wanted to reach for. And to be honest, I don't have that many formal occasions. And if I do have a formal occasion, I have other perfumes I'm probably going to reach for before that one, including my Nuit Confidence from Annie Goutel. So I did let go of Le Petit Robe Noir Intense. Another one I let go of is Le Petit Robe Noir Eau Fraiche. Now this one, you guys, again, blind purchase, really liked it. It was a very strong like. And if I only had a few perfumes, I would have kept this one because this would have been that perfect, comfortable wear to bed, wear around the house, running errands, just throw on when you don't know what to wear. It would have been great for that. The issue is I already have a couple other perfumes like that. And as I've told you guys before, I don't wear perfume a lot just when I'm at home hanging out. And the perfume I really like to wear to bed when I just want to relax is Sarah Jessica Parker Lovely. So I did decide to let go of Le Petit Robe Noir Fresh. It's absolutely stunning. It's such a beautiful, nutty, fresh perfume. I just didn't really have room in my collection for it. Another perfume that I let go of was Delina La Rose. So Delina La Rose, I still think, is so beautiful. It's a really refreshing, sort of lighter, more aquatic, summer, springtime version of the original Delina. It's not quite as tart as the original Delina. It doesn't have that incense in there. It is a different enough scent. I think that even if you like the original Delina, you could have both. The reason I decided to let go of Delina La Rose is because I did feel like, even though the performance was okay, I felt like I had to be very heavy on the trigger with that one. I'm not sure why. I don't know if it's because it just was such a light, watery sort of a perfume. I felt like I needed to be very heavy. And what I decided in the end was that if I want that kind of Delina vibe, I would just rather go with my exclusive. And because I have enough perfumes, I have so many perfumes in my collection, I definitely don't have room for perfumes that I feel like I need to be very heavy on the trigger. If I start feeling like I have to overspray, I have to mix and match, I have to layer them, I have to do all these fancy things to get the effect I'm looking for, then it kind of just makes it a no-no for me. So even though it was gorgeous, I decided to let it go to somebody who would enjoy wearing it more than I was enjoying wearing it. Another perfume that I very recently decided to let go of is Livia Bell Intense Mint. So I think I'm starting to realize that the Livia Bell range is maybe just not for me. I absolutely am obsessed with the way the Livia Bell Intense Mint smells. Like I've told you guys before, it's my favorite Livia Bell. It's got that beautiful raspberry vanilla accord. It's very sweet. It's very feminine. It has pretty good lasting power. But what I found when I wore it was I just simply didn't enjoy wearing it as much as I thought I was going to. Love the way it smells. Still loved coming up to the bottle, sniffing the bottle. It was very sweet, very enjoyable, hard not to like, but... When I wore it, it wasn't one of those perfumes that when I caught a whiff, I really fell in love. It was kind of just like, oh, that's what I'm wearing today. It's, it's just okay, you know? So again, an example of a perfume I love, but didn't love to wear. Another perfume that I let go of actually quite a while ago, and some people noticed that it wasn't in my collection anymore, was Chanel Number no. 19 Poudre. And again, this one and the original 19, both fragrances that I think are so stunning and so beautiful. They're kind of like a green powdery fragrance but it was one I just didn't think I was ever going to wear. It was one that I could appreciate kind of like Gris Charnel. I can appreciate Gris Charnel but I don't really enjoy wearing Gris Charnel so doesn't mean they're not beautiful scents just I cannot wear them so yeah the Chanel number no. 19 Poudre stunning beautiful like masterpiece of a green powdery scent but was never going to wear it. The next perfume again was one I got rid of quite a while ago and this is Gentle Fluidity Gold. So I love Maison Francis Kirk John. I think most of his fragrances are quite amazing including Grand Soir, um, Amorous Femme. I really like a lot of them. Ella Rose, very very pretty. But so far the only MFK fragrance that I have loved enough to keep in my collection is the Baccarat Rouge 540, the infamous Baccarat Rouge 540. <laughs> um, I actually really enjoy wearing Baccarat Rouge. My issue with Gentle Fluidity Gold was even though I thought it was so, so beautiful and it was really captivating and it kind of blew me away, was it gave me a headache pretty much 
instantly. I don't know what it was about it. Something about the notes just, it gave me such a headache, so I couldn't wear it. It was one of those ones that I really loved the way it smelled, but I could not handle actually wearing the perfume. Another perfume that I let go of was Tom Ford Tobacco Vini. So this one, again, not a blind purchase, really like it. Very sweet, vanillic, spicy tobacco scent. And the reason I let this one go is ultimately I decided it was too masculine for me. And I just didn't feel very good when I wore it. I didn't find that it brought out my feminine, kind of sensual energy that I was looking for. I would have much rather smelt it on my boyfriend and again it was one of those scents that I thought was absolutely stunning and quite a masterpiece but not something I could really wear in the end. Another perfume that I let go of is going to be a little surprising and it is Nishan A 100 Silent Ways. It's a beautiful kind of an apricot-y floral fragrance with a vanillic undertone. Very, very pretty, very beautiful, but again, I think it was just too heavy for me. I think it was just too much for me. It was one that I really loved the smell of, and I really have to learn to take my time when I get decants and when I get samples because it can be very easy to fall in love with perfume with a perfume at first sniff, think that you're head over heels for it, get it, still think you're head over heels, and then a couple of wears into it, realize that it's not for you and it doesn't mean it's not a beautiful perfume i think getting those niche on a perfumes actually kind of helped me to realize that sometimes niche is not the best way to go for me because there's actually very few niche perfumes that i love 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 and can keep in my collection because as i've shared with you guys before niche perfumes can be just very bold very heavy and i don't know what it was but something about the hundred silent ways just didn't really enjoy it when i actually wore it again it was just one of those ones i really liked but didn't really enjoy wearing so that's really what most of these come down to none of them are bad perfumes they're just some that I just couldn't wear another one that I still have currently but it's on the chopping block is Dior Addict and Dior Addict is really surprising even to myself because I love this perfume this was a blind purchase last year and it's such a beautiful intoxicating vanilla scent it's bold it has amazing performance you really don't need very much it's it's such an incredible perfume really um, but somewhere along the lines something switched for me and it went from being something I loved to smell and love to wear to all of a sudden there's something in it that bothers me I don't know if that's ever happened to you guys before but there's just something about it now that when I smell it, I just don't love it as much as I used to. And I have worn it before and really enjoyed it, but yeah, there's something in it that just kind of rubs my nose the wrong way now. I don't know. My nose has just changed and that one just is not going to work for me anymore. So that one I'm going to find a new home. And the last one that I have decided to let go of in recent months is Tribeca. And everyone's going to think I'm absolutely nuts because I pretty recently bought Tribeca. I absolutely love Tribeca. It's one of the most beautiful perfumes I've ever smelt. Honestly, it when I smelt it, it blew me away. It was an immediate love. And it was between that one and Greenwich Village. I really didn't know which one I wanted, Greenwich Village or Tribeca. They both kind of have... A similar vibe in the opening they both are a little similar to Baccarat Rouge but they are definitely their own perfumes but they're kind of along that line and as I've told you guys in previous videos as much as I love Tribeca I have no idea when I will wear it and there just is no occasion that works for me to wear it I've tried wearing it for the daytime I've tried wearing it for dates um, it just doesn't suit an occasion for me so again it's one of those perfumes that the bottle is beautiful the scent is absolutely stunning it's unique it's incredible it's so high quality it has such good lasting power but i just didn't know when to wear it and as a result i didn't wear it <laughs> so it was completely sitting there for no reason whereas the greenwich village i find that one to be very wearable very everyday appropriate i can easily grab and go with that one i don't have to think about it it just to me makes a perfect everyday scent and that's really what I need. So yeah, the Tribeca unfortunately did not stick around either and that one has already found itself a new home. So that is it for today's video. I hope that you guys enjoyed this little kind of mini declutter. In the future, I will try to hold on to bottles without selling them so quickly because I know that it's nicer to be able to actually show you the bottle and talk my way through the video. So I hope that you enjoyed this video and if you haven't already, feel free to head on over and follow me on Instagram and I will see you guys all very soon. Bye for now. Thank you.